Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's MSP Tech Talk as we roll on into fourth quarter. So today is a especially exciting lecture to present on Power BI and analytics. But before we get to that, a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, shout out to the sponsors that make this possible, um, bringing, uh, allowing us to bring academic content to you. Um, shout out to Constant Contact. We're gonna hear from them at the top of the hour. And then uh, SolarWinds MSP, who, by the way, just IPO'd last Friday. That kind of snuck up on me. So if you go to MarketWatch and type in SolarWinds, you can learn more about their IPO. Uh, a couple of uh, housekeeping items in addition to using the questions feature to ask your questions, which Jennifer Hallmark will read to me today, and our guest, uh, uh, Kali and Nigel, um, who we'll introduce properly in a moment. Uh, this Saturday in Redmond at the Microsoft Conference Center is the annual Office 365 Saturday event. And I really want you to think twice about this one. It's free, first of all, so you could Google Office 365 Saturday Redmond, sign up, so you're going to get a lunch, and you're going to get beverages, and you're going to get technical content. So I'm going for the Power BI lectures. Those are at 9.30 on Saturday morning and 10.45 on Saturday morning, but they have multiple tracks going on on different topics, SharePoint, 365, Azure, and so on. And then you wanna to stay to the end in the late afternoon because they have the prize giveaways. And boy, howdy, it's one of the most generous conferences, workshops I've been to in quite some time with respect to the prizes. Last year, I, I, I won a weather station that's hooked up outside and communicates back to the computer and allows me to play with weather underground and so on. Uh, aside from that, Ingram Micro next week in Washington, DC. And then the following week will be the Cisco uh, partner program, uh, partner event over at Mandalay Bay. So I look forward to seeing you as you're able to attend those. Now, with that said, we're talking Power BI to the SMB Nation community today as we delve deeper and deeper and deeper into adding business value. So let's do some quick introductions. Uh, Kali, Bainbridge Tech, good morning Go or good afternoon. Forgive me. Please introduce yourself, maybe a little bit of your background. Sure. Thanks, Harry. Uh, that's right. Um, we are running, um, my husband and I are running a business, Bainbridge Tech, that a year ago was a retail storefront and we transitioned to more a virtual location in this uh, current industry. Sure. Um, we are, uh, we service both commercial and consumer and have a hybrid model um, servicing broke fix and then also remote monitoring. Um, the current focus for me personally and what I'd done professionally in corporate and startup world was um, software implementation, uh, migrations, and so on and then of course data analytics and why i'm here mm -hmm. joining you harry <laughs> all right and nigel take a moment to introduce your past and your your, your present because people may recognize your name from your past at microsoft okay thanks harry so yeah my past is uh i've spent 11 years at microsoft five years in the uk then six in the in corporate us focused on partners and how we enable partners and through partner marketing and other things uh, I left Microsoft in 2011 for KPMG. There I spent five years selling back into Microsoft, uh, KPMG and solutions across finance uh, and, and go-to-market activities. Then of late, um, along with two other partners, we formed a, a Microsoft startup uh, focused on AI. Um, and we've already uh, delivered two projects to Microsoft and we're delivering one to Nuance at the moment and, and using Power BI a lot. Then I'll show you some of the dashboards that we're driving the outcomes with. All righty, so we're looking forward to that. Folks, it's it's a packed session and full disclosure, uh, I'm gonna show you parts of the video recording of the hands-on lab. And at the end of the session, there's gonna be a poll question allowing you to identify yourself if you would like to do the full hands-on lab. Uh, the full hands-on lab is about 60 minutes and. And quite frankly, it's like watching a cooking show where they prep the turkey, they go to a commercial break, and they come back and the turkey is done. I kind of want to run it that way today, like a cooking show, but I'm happy to do a deep dive with the uh, hand racers at a future date and complete the entire hands-on lab. It takes about an hour. Let's jump into it. First of all, shout out to SolarWinds. Again, we have sponsors 
that keep us on the air, make it possible. We fancy ourselves like public radio or public TV coming at you with authentic content. So shout out to SolarWinds uh, Backup. Um, if you want to check out a white paper that I wrote called Backup Simplified, please do SMB Nation White Papers Backup Simplified. We'll get you that link in the thank you email tomorrow. So the agenda is defining uh, the dashboard, Power BI introduction, the Power BI hands-on demo that I'm gonna show you snippets from the video that I created. Then we're gonna talk to Nigel about Power BI in the real world and have uh, the ability to answer um, your questions. And I'm looking for our two panelists, just uh, full disclosure, heads up, but if you could interject comments as we go, uh, Kali, I think in particular up front, some of the storytelling features. I want to double click down on your background in corporate America with that. So please speak up and uh, that'll make it holistic. So why dashboarding? Here's, here's my take on the world. First of all, um, it's something I can do and I didn't even put that in print. So if, if I can do it, you can do it. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, I, I contend we've done it all along. You're going to see in a couple of slides what I mean on that. And big data is where old SQL Server MCSEs uh, go. I, I didn't say go to die, but that's where we go. And the idea was uh, I got SQL uh, Server certified in 6X back in the late 90s. I worked for a regional accounting firm in Bellevue, Washington called Clark Newber. And Clark Newber was a Dynamics uh, reseller. So Great Plains Dynamics reseller um, in our network consulting division. And this is when Dynamics based in Fargo, uh, initially when I started at Clark Newber in the mid nineties, they were tied to NetWare and Btrieve as their engine. So boy, that was a, that was a dance. And then they got closer and closer and closer to Microsoft and got acquired by Microsoft. So not surprisingly, the backend database engine shifted to SQL Server. And in order to have the right to resell Great Plains Dynamics in that world, um, you had to get SQL Server certified. And, and I was basically the only one on staff who either should, could, or would do it. Took a while, um, but boy, howdy, I, I really enjoyed that. And I always thought if I got fired, uh, I'd put myself in the database field. Um, I'd, I'd become a DBA. The good news is I don't even have to do that. I can be an analytics person. So SQL Server is a fantastic setup to, to, to extend your skill set and renew it into big data analytics and dashboarding. Final shout out to uh, uh, Great Plains. Um, still have a large Fargo presence, but Doug Brugman is the governor of North Dakota, who was the founder of that. Um, it's all about adding business value. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And uh, Kali, I'm gonna call on you on a couple of the upcoming slides. And then, but to level set, dashboards are monitoring experiences presenting a single canvas of tiles. Um, you can think of it as some of the sites like Pinterest that are cartification, if, if that helps you visualize that. Each tile displays a single visual was created with data from the underlying data sets. Dashboard can, dashboards can display tiles which source data from, with source data from different data sets. So here's what I wanna to talk to you about is uh, I wrote these books in the late 90s and early 2000s. As you know, I take great pride and I pen 20 books. And so these are some early books where I was already talking about this nearly 20 years ago. So in fact, let me grab them since I'm on camera. So the first one on the left is a book I did for Microsoft Press called Connecting to Customers, hardcover, which was a rarity, and it did not have a floppy disk in the back in that era, which was a rarity. And on the left, what we were already talking about was the, the holistic Venn diagram for the Microsoft partner with respect to internet commerce. And these were some early Microsoft plays uh, in the ASP world and internet commerce world, but we were already having conversations that, well, wait a minute, we got an ERP system, we got a CRM system, and we have business analytics, and the intersection is the Microsoft partner who should be uh, taking advantage of that to build their internet commerce practice. So that was the context on the left. Now in the center, 
is the one I'm probably more proud of and near and dear to the heart. So this would have been the SBS uh, best practices book. Let me find it. So this is one of the first ones that SMB Nation self-published, the SBS 2000 best practices book. And what we're saying here is we have this thing called small business server. So center of your screen and in that center image to the right, we had this thing. Um, and I mean, this this goes back. And boy, they just had introduced the broadband router in that time frame. So you didn't have proxy server dialing up that modem to do caching. Um, but you still had a fax modem, as you'll see on the right. So we had this bundle uh, of, of server technology called Small Business Server. It went across LAN A to the workstation. And the purpose I uh, suggest here is the client, the lady is saying, how can I run my business better? And that in this particular example was accounting reports. So that's why we're here is to have a presentation layer to all this stuff that we do over an in infrastructure. And then finally on the lower right was a book um, called the MCSE Consulting Bible, same time frame, early 2000s. And there I used a slightly different example because the audience wasn't necessarily SMB. It was the MCSE audience. So that would include enterprise. And so I'm, but I'm essentially saying the same thing. I upgraded my story to back office 2000 on the lower right. We go through SQL Server 2000, which would have been after my certification. We have the client and it's all about viewing clients from a business focus, which is business reporting. So, Kali, can 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 you catch what I'm throwing here and maybe talk about your time in the private sector, I believe, in the financial industry, uh, an online taxation startup and so on, and your your paradigm of dashboarding um, with storytelling. And I stole that I stole that line from you, by the way. Forgive me. <laughs> you know, it's definitely evolved to storytelling, right? So um, we've been doing this for years. You talk about your history here. Um, in terms of uh, sharing the analytics, but I, I think everybody knows this with dashboarding now. Um, we want something simple to digest. We want we want a quick image, and we want to be able to respond to it. Um, I, I think in in days of old, from my experience, um, at, at a corporate level, you're still always say, uh, helping senior management understand the business, and you're trying to be succinct and accurate and um, communicative. The the two things I think of as as you're kind of talking through how our analytics have evolved um, is, is in the past when we do that uh, senior management level um, monthly business review or, or whatever um, holistic reviews, it was very much about explanation. And I think this new world is kind of helping us hit exploration more. So it's just a little more interactive sort of storytelling um, where you're not necessarily what, sure what story you're going to tell, but you're exploring to see what's going to unfold. Yep. So uh, with that, is that kind of what you're looking for, Harry? Or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And again, feel free to, to pitch in as you go, because you're, 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 you're out there carrying the bag. <laughs> I, I, I just play an analytical person on uh, live TV, but you're actually doing it. So we'll move on. Uh, and in fact, here we are, the dashboard is storytelling. Um, folks, this is the end of the hands-on lab. I'm going to give you some context on this, but this takes about an hour. But as you can see, we're working with tiles in different forms of visualization. So, so for example, uh, the map at the bottom. And, and the reason I want to kind of give a call out to the map um, in the context of storytelling and dashboards is this is exactly what's occurring on the big three uh, cable news channels right now. Pick on MSNBC with Steve Karnacki, who goes to the big board, and he uses a touch screen to double click down into different voting precincts, and he can slice and dice the data and present it from different dimensions. And so I have always liked maps. Holly, um, maybe if, if you could talk about the different kind of art you've worked with, we're looking at raw numbers, we're looking at line charts, we're looking at blocks, we're looking at geography. What what are some things that you've done to present data? Yeah, um, good question. I, I think often there's the um, horizontal, horizontal bar chart that, 
that um, prioritizes or kind of shows you, uh, I mean, it's one that I don't see here, that shows you, um, you know, best performers and, and who's still in the field. Um, but like you, I really like geography. And a lot of times the geography, I think, explodes from maybe a single digit up above. So in this case, year-to-date revenue, maybe you'd have, um, you know, you'd have how that uh, reaches out, what, what that looks like across the nation, you know, if that's relevant. And then using yeah. those, um, the different, um, the different, uh, I, I don't know when I we call those images, but the circles there, um, using those to kind of explode that out. Um, again, I, I, I like, I'm not sure what the thing on the right yet says yet, so I want you to help me with that, the, the color chart. Um, but I, I like it, you know, it's always about simplicity and context. And sometimes what we do is we overdo it. And so we want to make it, we want to make it simple enough. What's the revenue? Where are we quarterly? You know, that sort of thing. We want those, yeah. those high level simplicity and then um, a couple telling pieces about it. Yeah. Yeah. And to your point earlier about the evolution of dashboarding being more interactive, um, what you can do, and I'm going to show it in the demo, but it, it, again, my expertise to the extent I have it is with Power BI and not some of the competitors I'm going to mention, but Power BI has a natural language interface where you can ask questions and it's interactive. And so that's kind of cool. Um, we'll get to that. Let's talk about Power BI. Okay, so uh, we have free, which is the desktop, which is what the hands on lab is. And, and folks, this is where you want to start. Okay, I mean, this is basically a, a single license uh, to get you going. And then as you get into an organization, you would have Power BI Pro at $9.99 um, a month. And then finally, way off the chart would be large scale deployments. But let me let me tell you some interesting storytelling between uh, the desktop and the BI Pro. Um, when I was in that big data startup in downtown Seattle for a couple of years on Lower Queen Anne, one of the accounts we were trying to sell back into Microsoft was the Power BI team. Uh, we were already doing a fair amount of work for Bing Rewards and some other groups at Microsoft. And with the Power BI team, uh, what we found, um, and I don't think I listed out on the slide, but a uh, future slide, but basically I'm going to say, and it's been a couple years, but the numbers were kind of like this, that you had like, for the sake of argument, 5 million people that had downloaded and implemented the free Power BI desktop. And then you had 50,000 people that had converted and were paying uh, I thought at the time it was five bucks a month, but today it's $9.99 a month. And what we were doing with predictive analytics is we were taking the information you providing, because we had it, right? You've signed up as a Microsoft partner. You profiled yourself on the Microsoft site. We know a, a fair amount about you. And we were trying to figure out how to target within a population of, a, again, assume 5 million, how to target people to get them to pay, right? That was kind of the bottom line. But it was interesting that we had that kind of drop off. It, it, it was shocking what the drop off was. Now, um, the one thing about predictive analytics is it changes over time. So, you know, please understand this is over two years ago that I had this experience and Power BI was still uh, young, still developing its reputation. So I'm sure those numbers have changed and I'm sure Microsoft has done uh, a better job at a campaign to convert. Um, and Nigel, I don't know if you have anything, I don't want you to break any NDA agreements, but I don't know if you have any insights into the world of Microsoft and who will pay and who will play for free. Good question, not really, no. Um, we're using the free version at the moment, but. Uh, I think when we start to work with customers and share the, instead of the, we present, say, the web interface to the data uh, for Power BI, I'm not sure we're going to show that, but in future, we're going to share export Power BI desktops. Yeah. So I think that's the future we're going to go. So yeah, other than that, that's that's the way we're looking at it at the moment. Fair enough. Folks, thank you. And I want you to remember $9.99 a month per user. Just remember that, okay? Um, Here's a different view from the Office 365 E3 console. So a lot of us on the call use Microsoft Action Pack, and that grants us five cows uh, to the uh, E3 edition of 365. 
you have to scroll down, you have to go to billing services, down, 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 way below the pay line, and you'll see where you can purchase Power BI um, or implement it as Power BI Free Edition. Now, here's the bad news. Power BI is not in the Microsoft Action Pack, uh, the, the paid for version. So you're, you know, you're, there's a lot of generosity in the Microsoft Action Pack system called Maps, um, but in terms of paid uh, 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 Dynamics CRM, five licenses. So there's a lot of generosity for your five um, hundred dollars a year, but Power BI um, at the paid level is not one of them. Let's talk competition, and maybe I'll have my two guests pitch in here. So uh, Power BI, um, I, I would offer originated out of the Seattle area with Microsoft, and then you have Tableau, which is in the Seattle area, and a cute little hip community called Fremont, just north of downtown Seattle. Um, you have Kibana, which I have worked with when I was in the big data startup. That's an open source solution. And then you have Click. I know there's others like Domo, these are ones I'm familiar with. Um, here's my concern about Tableau. So first of all, go poke around Tableau and go to their public library um, of completed dashboards because there are works of art there that will give you ideas. You know, you have uh, Hanna-Barbera animated cartoon characters stacked on top of each other to represent data. They, they, they've done some cool stuff. I have not seen as much open or public uh, sample dashboards from Microsoft, but that might be me not poking around. Um, Kali, did did you work with Tableau? What what other what tools have you worked with in the dashboard area? Yeah, both Tableau and Click. Um, uh, Tableau, I was able to use as um, an interface just to plop on on top of um, some data, and and that was quick and easy and fun and friendly and. Um, Again, back to more of the exploratory and the predictive analytics and that sort of thing. So, fantastic tool for that. Um, but at one of the startups at Avalara, we had a huge implementation of that that I was not responsible for, but was a benefactor of, of a pretty integration. And this goes back to, to your books and early SQL. I mean, no matter what, if your integration's not pretty or if the quality of your data isn't, you know, it, it, um, these data visualization tools also really quickly let you problem solve where your um, where mm -hmm. your data issues are. So no matter what, foundation has to be great um, going in. Click. I used in a corporate environment, and um, and my experience was very. Um, uh, it just was a little um, not as versatile and and not as interesting or innovative as Tableau, but but it may also have been our siloed the way we used it. It may have been a very controlled environment, so I don't have a lot to share there. Okay. Uh, Nigel, any experience with other presentation layers? Or maybe I'm asking the wrong question, no offense, because we're going to get to to what you do best in a few minutes. No, yeah, the wrong question probably. You know, we're trying to be 100% Microsoft, uh, so Power BI on the front end. In the back end, we are still using some components of IBM. Uh, Watson, because Azure can't do it at the moment. I can talk a little bit about that, but we're, we're trying to be 100% at the moment. All right. Well, let me give you a wrap, you guys, on the competition. So so here's my take. Uh, we looked hard at Tableau when I was at this startup called Lead Scores. Lead Scores with the letter C, if you want to Google it. Um, we ended up with Cabana because we had acquired a business intelligence firm out of Madrid, Spain, that was based on open source. And they were using Elasticsearch, which goes hand in hand with Kibana. Um, so we ended up using that. Now, that wasn't as friendly as uh, the comments I'm going to make on Power BI that even Harry can do it. But Kibana was essentially free. Tableau is not free. And that's the number one complaint with it is it is top shelf and expensive. And it makes the $9.99 from Microsoft that you would pay for real Power BI cheap. Um, I mean, we, we were looking upwards of a couple thousand dollars a month with Tableau and, and we just couldn't right size it. And it, 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 it kind of goes back to a little bit of the reason for being, um, when we were generating all this predictive analytics data for a large online college, you know, the bottom line is, is that 
we were using Elasticsearch and we would do our black box, box magic and come up with a score for an online MBA student. And that was all good. But the, 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 the problem was is that back at the online college, their staff would take that, export it as CSV to Excel, slice and dice it, and then rechart it. And so we kind of embraced that, that we didn't necessarily want our black box to build every donut chart in the world when we could not predict what those donut charts would be with the client. The client knows their business best. Um, but again, the horse we rode was Cabana. Now, the, the, the point I want to make as an add-on to that is Power BI is Excel on steroids. So if you know Excel and you're willing to kind of go up on YouTube and revisit some of the power features of Excel like pivot tables, you can do Power BI, okay? And it works very well with Excel. So what I'm going to try to do, and Jenny, keep me honest, let's make sure this demo comes up. I'm going to walk you through, and I'm going to periodically uh, fast forward the movie. But here's a hands-on lab that I'm happy to do with you from Microsoft. Um, some of you on the call Jared, will... can you make that any bigger? It's a little hard to see. Oh, okay. Thanks, Jenny. I'm single screen. Is that better? Perfect. Okay. So, folks, we're going to scoot through this, and I am going to offer you a dedicated hands-on lab session that would be north of 60 minutes, and it would be a, a, a better format with a quite quite frankly, a more focused audience where we're all doing the same thing at the same time. But essentially, uh, this is a lab that's an introduction to Power BI. And so you launch a virtual machine and you provision the Power BI service. The hands-on lab text is on the right. I realize that's hard to read. Unfortunately, it's even hard to read while you're doing the hands-on lab but you're gonna provision a VM and you're gonna click the Power B, you're gonna sign in and authenticate, blah, 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 pretty standard stuff. And then it's gonna have you change your password and that kind of thing. You then are going to upgrade uh, the Power BI to Power BI Pro for free for a 60 day trial for the purposes of this lab. You then are going to get the data source. And this is the key point. You're going to see me scroll down in just a second, and you're going to see the data source comes from an Excel file. And that's the key point. This is the relationship that even I can do this, that it's an Excel, native Excel file on D drive to grab the data for this toy spin, uh, tailspin toys. So we go to D drive and grab the data. And I'll just kind of go through that and the data provisions, and it creates a basic dashboard. We rename the dashboard to Tailspin Toys. Trust me, it's better to watch this in fast time instead of real time. So here is interesting. Now that the data has been provisioned and the data set is the US sales analysis, we're going to click on that lower right called future key uh, Q&A questions. And this is natural language. Okay, so I do want to take a second to let this play. Um, panelists, you're welcome to speak up, but I'm going to add a question in uh, English. And to me, this is the secret sauce in my experience with Power BI because um, I make no claim that I know how to program an R or Python. And, and Kali, I know, Kali, I know that uh, Tableau, um, I, first of all, I don't recall if Tableau had natural language when I assessed the product for two weeks, but I certainly remember it had a developer element to it. Is that fair? Were you down kind of at the code level or could you work with it naturally? Um, I, I, I'd say generally, no, I was not doing the code level, but a little SQL got you along a long way. So. Okay. <laughs> so I typed a question there, folks, about total revenue and natural language, and then the demo goes on. It brings back the revenue. Now watch this. We're going to modify the question. The question in natural language was show total revenue. 
For CY 2018, it changes it back to 30 million from 81 million, yada, yada, yada. Then we start building tiles. Okay. And so we're going to rename the tile to year to day revenue. And it pops up the 31 million that was based on a natural language query. Then we're going to change the language to have it by month. And the by month displays as a horizontal bar chart. But then we go ahead and change it to a line graph over on the visualization tab. Again, folks, if I can do it, you can do it. It's kind of the bottom line. We change it to the color purple. We go on and on and on. We put, we make it a tile and resize it on the dashboard. Then we work with a report um, that has the corporate logo that we're gonna pin right there. I'm pinning it to the dashboard. I approve the pinning. We add more tiles as we go. There's a more comprehensive revenue cost and profitability chart that will be added to the dashboard. And we are starting to build out the report and here go the dashboard. So we're taking report elements and putting them onto the dashboard that again can be shared and played with here. Here's the, we're back at the dashboard with those elements. I got to move Tailspin Toys up to the upper left. So this is starting to take form with some of the things we looked at. Let me do a sanity check, folks, because I realize it's a little bit like we're at the bottom of the hour. It's a little bit like watching uh, a cooking show. So I'm going to stop the demo. I'm going to go back to my presentation. And this is the final result. So hopefully this makes sense. The 31 million in revenue, the purple revenue line, the revenue cost and profitability that you saw, I added revenue by region name um, over on the, uh, the far right. We have the geography for the map. It, we eliminated Hawaii and Alaska. So the map is just the continental US, yada, yada, yada. That's what it looks like. Um, folks, uh, since we're at the bottom of the hour, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, Jenny, if you could keep an eagle eye over on the questions tab, if people have questions to date. Um, and again, I have a poll question coming up at the end if you'd like a more intimate setting for the hands-on lab that you just saw and we'll complete it as a team. Later today, we are announcing a contest for Small Business Saturday. Um, and it's on behalf of SureWeb, where I was last week in Montreal. You're going to sign up for Small Business Saturday and participate. You're going to answer a survey. You're going to take a selfie on Small Business Saturday with hashtags, and you're going to be entered to win a $1,000 American Express card. So we're announcing that today. That will go live end of day. We'll certainly get the word out to you on that. Just wanted to give you a heads up. And SolarWinds Mail Assure, uh, we also have a white paper that I did on um, the uh, mail protection. And you can go to smbnation.com, white papers, last mile office 365 protection. And the thought was, uh, it's, it's, it's getting ugly out there with email as an attack vector. And SolarWinds Mail Assure has defenses against those attack vectors. So. If you could avail yourself of the white paper, Last Mile Office 365 protection that I wrote. Nigel, now let's get to the real world. Enough of this imaginary, fictitious company demo stuff. Um, Nigel, I'll go ahead and, and I'm happy to run through your slides since uh, I, have, I own the screen. If you wanna go ahead and just tell me next slide when you're ready, and then finally we'll make you a presenter for the demo that you can give us about your tool. Okay, great. So um, as you can see, so BizSize, as I mentioned in the beginning, there's three founding partners, uh, all with Microsoft and KPMG Deloitte experience. And over the last 10 months, we've built a, an AI engine. Um, and I'll cover off what we do. But uh, AI engine is good, but if you can't present the data in a way that the customer can consume it, then it's uh, not great. And Harry, one of your comments about Power BI is Excel on steroids came very true in one of our first 
projects for analysts and research communities. Suddenly they could show the customer the data and click here, there, and it all came alive. So it's uh, very, uh, very enthralling. So if you go into the next slide, that'd be great. Yes, sir. So um, basically, uh, if I just explain a little bit of the back end, what we do, and that'd be great for the context of how we're then using BI. So what BizSize does is we go out and we collect uh, lots and lots of data. So that data can be a customer's data. So for those familiar, say, with companies like Microsoft, it may be licensing data, it may be consumption of cloud services, uh, may any may be any kind of data from other clients as well. We then also then bring in other data that can look at um, companies, their progression towards cloud. We can bring in news items, we can bring in Twitter, and we can also bring in uh, primary research, natural language text as well. And we bring all those massive amounts of data, we put them through our AI engine, and then we can serve up the outcomes in Power BI. So if you next slide, please. Yes, sir. Wow, that looks like a Peloton bike workout. Yeah. Someone's sitting on their bike looking at a TV doing arm lifts there. Oh, Nigel. Oh, no, no. They, they just, no, Harry, they just created their first Power BI. They just completed your lab. That's what it is. So, <laughs> so um so we, we like to think we focus on a number of what we call entities. And in, in the Power BI demo I'm going to show, you, you'll see what an entity is. So an entity could be a customer. So if you're looking at customers to see who they're talking to, what their customers are talking about, um, who they're connected with, for example. And in the same context, channel. So, you know, we are starting to use, um, we're starting to look at bringing some projects where we're helping some large companies recruit the next the next channel partners. So we can go out there and identify how successful they are, the type of offerings they have, where they are in their cloud journey, what their customers are saying, and bring all that together. So customer and channel are kind of interchangeable. We then, as you think about the enterprise space, we can start to bring out signals around industry. Um, I'll show you in one of the demos, we just completed a project for a, an AI company in the car industry. And those familiar with car, you can see that's a fast moving world. You know, everyone's gonna have autonomous cars, shared cars, electric cars, uh, and connected cars. So lots and lots of data there. So we, we can have an industry and again, bring all the data in and serve up through a dashboard. And then everyone is obsessed with competition. You know, what are their competition doing? What are the customers saying about the competition? Who's the competition working with? What's the perception of their products and services as well? So we like to bring this up through Power BI uh, to then for the customer to can say, ratify, are we on the right strategy path? Um, you know, where we've got weaknesses in our strategy compared to our competitors as well. So Power BI is a great way to serve this data up. So next slide, please, Harry. Yep. Um, and this is basically, um, this sort of shows, we bring in the data on the left-hand side. It's a little bit, you can't see it very well. It's, uh, white background there but we bring in the data as i mentioned before from various different sources we build out our algorithms and use machine learning uh, and then serve up uh, in a dashboard to the client uh, in a way that they can consume the data what we also do there is sometimes we where we want to prioritize such as customer and channel acquisition we can then use prioritization tools as well to uh, say, okay, who's the most likely candidate or target uh, and, and move on that way and all the way through to selecting the right customer to go after with the right messages. Um, so Nitro, if you don't mind, uh, as we look at that funnel yeah. under business yeah. scenarios and when you and I reconnected a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and by the way, thank you for reaching out because it it, it it turns out we have common business interests yet again, but this funnel was at the core of what I was doing at Lead Scores over on Lower Queen Anne, right? We we called it predictive analytics, um, but that we're, we're, we were essentially ranking, right? Does that make sense? I mean, that's that's a huge part of analytics. <laughs> no, exactly. So if I give that, if I give the example, you know, we start to do channel recruit now. So what we'll do, we'll get a list of channel partners. The first pass we'll look at is, you know, through one of the uh, data sources we have, we can see where anyone is in their cloud transformation journey score. We can see, you know, are they working with Google AWS, as in do they have data as an IS platform, as yeah. a SaaS provider? So that's kind of the first bit. So if if a client, and it could be a DST or a big cloud provider is looking for real tech savvy partners, you know, that's our first pass of prioritization. Then what we do, we then go out and with the ones we've uh, said, yes, let's go to the next phase. We go out and we search and look at what their customers are saying about them, what their services they have, what their partners and, and their you know upstream providers are saying. And again, that's another way of better qualifying and then passing then on to the, 
the outbound mechanism, which could be email, could be uh, LinkedIn, could be phone, whatever. But yeah, that's, so that prioritization, lead scoring, whatever you want to call it, is now with AI, you can do this very, very rapidly uh, to get to the right partners or customers at the right time. Well, and I want to I want to just take a second here because uh, as I've expanded my journey in analytics, um, I have come to discover it's a field as big as legal or medical. And and here's what I mean. I had some very interesting conversations with Bellevue College, used to be known as Bellevue Community College, and uh, over the summer had some interesting conversations because you know I, I I I also like you know academic outcomes and so on. And their view of the world on uh, big data and analytics was very different from mine and Nigel, I would suggest yours. So maybe we're talking about BI, business intelligence, we're talking about marketing analytics. They would have been coming at it more, in fact, the, the tagline for their department data analytics is where statistics meets computer science. Well, that's a different paradigm. And so they were gonna be more interested and getting gaz gazilla bytes of data from the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center on South Lake Union and slicing and dicing that and saying, this is how we're gonna get two and four year students jobs. And Nigel, I can't disagree with that. I guess, uh, I, I, in both of you, I'd just be interested in your opinion on the breadth and depth of the field of analytics because Boy, howdy, I feel like I'm a cardiologist and some days I'm talking to an oncologist and we speak a different language. Does that make sense, folks? <laughs> yeah, I mean, from our perspective, you know, AI is now allows us to expand out into other industries. You know, I mentioned the car industry. We're starting to do things in nonprofit. Um, I'll show you one of the demos where um, for homelessness, for example, we want to bring in Seattle, all the different communities are looking at the problem and can we aggregate the voice of homelessness? You know, this week we're actually, um, I was in the, the in with the Chief of Police of Seattle, sort of showing, hey, this is what we can do. We're trying to get the Seahawks involved as well. So um, I think you can point data, if there's data, whatever form of data is, if data exists, then applying AI and then presenting through Power BI is a definite business model. Um, yeah. We're also talking to the, uh, the, the oil spillage in the Gulf of uh, Mexico. You know, there's, there's lots of investment from or, or where the oil companies are, are trying to fix what was broken. And so there's lots of things, IoT devices, and no one's really monitoring the impact or update. Again, another solution where lots and lots of data, we can apply AI and then present out again uh, as you know where progress has been made. So yeah, I think definitely it's opening up very, very many different business models. Yeah, and uh, Kali, maybe if you want to pitch in the type of data you worked with um, at the bank and at the Avalara and so on, I, I, you know, it sounds like it might have been more financial, maybe not necessarily forward-looking predictive analytics. Care to comment on the breadth of the field? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate your comment in terms of academic versus kind of that business focus that. It's typically doing that senior management. How do we how do we drive the business? Uh, where did we miss? Where do we make a difference? Um, but but hearing Nigel speak too, um, in terms of that um, that bigger picture, that AI where you can do the machine language where it can continue to repeat. I just think there's a lot more opportunity for exploration there, and and I'd say opportunity it it, it explores opportunity in a different way than how is my business going to to go, but how. Um, what are people doing well in, in, in the country for homelessness? What, where aren't they doing well? And, and, and I don't know, find, find factors or um, you know, data points that, that make a, um, that, that show a predictive uh, opportunity. Yep, yep, yep. All right, Nigel, next slide. Are you ready, sir? I'm ready, let me just uh, couple of, run through a couple of demos. That'd be great. Okay, so Jenny, uh, if you could make Nigel the presenter. And Jenny, I have a question for you. Do you know why I'm wearing an orange shirt today instead of my normal black shirt while you're making Nigel a presenter? I have no idea. Okay, well, I'm going to show you. So the shirt says mandatory booth duty. And what this is from the Office 365 team. And this was at WPC, now called Inspire, a few years ago. And Margie Gradwell, who we've worked with, and she moved on to DocuSign, but she's wonderful. She printed up these shirts for her staff because they were fussing. They had mandatory booth duty. But Jenny, it gets better. But this is the Office 365 color. But let me see if I can do this. Tell me if you can read the back about where's the party. 
I don't know if that came through, but on the back of the shirt was where's the party reflecting. Um, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is the culture of the 365 team in Redmond. They're actually pretty cool guys. All right, Nigel, I've spoken my piece. Let's do a demo in the real world. <laughs> okay, can everyone see my screen just to check there? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So um, just before I, I've got two or three demos and I just want to focus on, you know, the different types of business scenarios that you can, you know, where data exists and then through Power BI that you can look to sort of drive. So this first one, and this this is a, um, if you think of surveys, most people do surveys, they ask a number of questions, they're fixed and you score from one to five. And there's always a, a couple of boxes where there's open-ended responses. Um, we're seeing a rapid change in, in the research world where people want to use more and more of open-ended responses. Um, typically in a survey of you know 5,600 responses, that can take weeks to code. Um, with AI and then presenting for Power BI, we can cut that time down to literally hours. Um, you know, very, very quickly, you can serve up data. Uh, you can create views here. This is to the example where um, the analyst that was typically using Excel with the client um, was did, did very, very rarely demonstrate it to the customer. Now with a Power BI interface, you very quickly go on. So, okay, for an open-ended question like what is trust, you can click, click on customer service, and then you can look at a sub uh, topic around that. And then you can look at things like sentiment, positive and neutral. Even, and this is a bit where we're using IBM at the moment, we want to switch to uh, Azure as soon as available. We can look at the motion. <clears throat> and then as you build your Power BI interface, you can quickly- Hey, Nigel, um, yep. sanity check. Uh, Jenny, is Nigel, he is displaying. Okay, my bad. Okay, continue. I, I, I'm, I'm at fault. Uh, and Nigel, uh, just quickly, just for the audience, but this is from Power BI. I, I really want to emphasize you're doing all of this inside of Power BI with the tile concept, correct? Yeah, no, this is actually the web interface, but uh, I've got the Power BI dashboard there as well. So what we typically do is with a client, rather than get them to you know load up Power BI, we can we can publish the Power BI, um, and then this view, and then this is interactive. So we yep. can send the analyst to the client and then they can click on the data as if they got the Power BI desktop themselves. They can't okay. click and they can't, you know, copy data or anything, but they can at least manipulate the data. So it gives them an idea of what the data is telling them to, about the outcome. Uh, and then you can quickly get to things like the, the text here, the answer around a particular comment coming back from a client. So that's that's one usage. So again, um, hey, hey, Nigel. yes, uh, this, this is Kali. I just wanted to share. So what gets me excited about seeing this data is is I can tell you're filtering because I see your responses down, you know, below are a fraction of what they, the whole collection of the data is because we're looking as, at what is trust. But then also, you know, this is where I think th things become more interesting. So when I look at the three personas, um, I see customer service now is not at the top for Joy and non-target. Whereas before it was kind of boring when I don't see, you know, when I see everything looks the same, the trends look the same. So yep. I just wanted to say, this is the kind of stuff that gets me excited when I see data. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew we'd get you going. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. So, so this is one example. So let me switch to another one. So um, here's another uh, a way we can build dashboards. So the problem statement here is a, a large, and this is all public data, by the way, so there's not showing any client data at all. Um, the problem statement here is we try to identify entities and this is where we can build a tile of entities and in this case they are smart spaces or companies that do these types of projects engineering construction transport and management and then they're doing the projects with these type of organizations so these are local and regional governments in the uk and, and the us and again you can build your view so i use the example here say arab group you know they're based in the uk i can quickly the view changes quickly to say okay arab group are doing these types of projects and they're doing with these types of customers we build bars, charts to show that you know that uh, which customers are doing most with. You can create other views as well, and then we also picked up in this case other entities where they're working with. So, and again, the quick way of clicking customers and then selecting their relationships. Um, if I move on on this one and another use of tiles in Power BI, uh, this one we're using what we call technographic and firmographic data. So you can build views, say, okay, I want to look at all companies that have a revenue between 50 and 100 million, and then you can serve up the view there. Um, I want to look at all companies that maybe just doing energy and construction projects. Again, it helps you then deselect or select the right uh, uh, companies for the, for the customers to look at. So a way of a, a real active dashboard. 
And also, as you think, as you develop with AI and Power BI, uh, an annuity model as well. So with the data, if you, especially if you bring in the external data and you're refreshing it, that's something that you can build in that your customers and clients will are be willing to pay for. Then um, on this one, again, another view where you can start to build out displays for your client. Um, what we did here, we gave a sample of where we can really enrich those those customers with that, the external data I sort of talked to in the past. So we can bring in news and social data. Um, so again, if I want to look at a company, say Black & Veatch, I do. I can select there. I can bring up a build a view here where their projects are within the US. I can build a view of, okay, I want to look at the energy and water project specifically. Um, and what's interesting here, and, and especially with Twitter and news, is I can then start to look at relationships between other entities. So, for example, Black & Veatch, if I click on transport and management uh, and not energy water, I can start to see, okay, are they working with uh, smart car companies as well? And th this quickly comes up as well. So this is a view. This is a dashboard. In this one specifically, we try to say, okay, if you're interested in selling them technology, you know, these customers are working with some of the, you know, big providers from a mail server perspective. This is data we can bring in. We can also, and what's becoming uh, big is, is customer experience. Everyone's interested in what customers are saying about their, their business. And so you can look at this as well to say, okay, uh, you pull in, pull in these signals as well. So many views, we kind of honed in on this view at the moment that sort of shows the, the amount of data, data points around a, a particular topic. But then when you click on it, you can very easily go to that particular data that's brought up uh, in that case there. Um, let me very quickly go on to another one. This is just another example. Um, this is the, the auto industry. What you can do here, you can build up different uh, what we call entities. So entities such as a competitor, a customer, or other, or a partner. You can build timeline views with Power BI. So you say, look, I want to look at uh, all the signals around electric cars. I want to pick on a particular month. Uh, so again, you, the customer finds this very useful at the flick, you know, the fingertips in terms of the data is there. So you look at all the things in April. So it's almost like a search engine on steroids, but very, very specific to their business. Uh, and the other thing to do is then also show associations. So which companies are talking, which companies here. Importantly, then bringing up sentiment, you know, what's positive, what's neutral, showing a view there. And what's key, what we've seen a lot of customers like is this feature here where you can show the keywords in this kind of, uh, in this view that you've seen many times before. Then the final one, um, how am I doing on time? Yeah, good. Um, I was just going to add on that last one with the keywords and the Twitter feed, although you're displaying it here, is that, you know, this is where I think we're developing the paradigm, right? We're still very early in this world. I call it the five and a quarter inch floppy disk stage. So we're still developing the paradigm, but you're thinking the right ways. I did some work with Simply Measured down at the Pike Place market before they got acquired, and they were kind of about measuring social activity. But go on, Nigel. Yeah, yeah, and then the final one um, uh, I mentioned this at the beginning is you know we're looking to how we can help nonprofits as well using this technology. So the first one there's a there's a group together across different businesses, uh, as I mentioned, the police, the Seahawks, etc., thinking how can we come together to look at homelessness. And number one is is can, let's pull all the different information around Seattle that's, that people are talking about homelessness, whether they're people that are helping in different ways. Secondly, we're thinking about how we can go out with um, hotspots and interview people that are homeless and, and in a way that we can start to understand what some of the reasons are because you know there's many things from uh, they may be out of work it may be drugs maybe mental health all those types of things yeah. then i think carly you mentioned it you know the next step here is then to go out and see where are some leading practices maybe in atlanta maybe in manchester and england where people are also addressing this issue so again you can bring in all the data and then present it to a client in a way that they can quickly get to the to the uh, the nuance of the problem um, and you can look at organizations that people, key people are there, key news items, et cetera. So and this is just giving you another view of how we can use Power BI in different forms to, to serve up data to, to be consumed. There we go. All right, my friend. Um, well, thank you very much. And I, I, I'll tell you, Jenny, if you could cancel all my afternoon appointments, I'm going to go Power BIing. I've decided. I'm now... Kali, I'm a little bit like you. I'm fired up. <laughs> Cancel all my calls. And uh, okay, Jenny, if you could uh, take me back to presentation mode, I think we're we're coming up on uh, roughly the top of the hour, folks. And we're gonna uh, hear from Constant Contact. 
so we've got Matt and Matt. Let me let me get let me get back all settled. Trini, if you could give me a sanity check that I'm uh, back online. You are back online, and it looks like we've got Matt joining you as well. Oh, I want Matt and Matt. I'm not just going to take one Matt. I want Matt number one and Matt number shit now. <laughs> Matt, Matthew, Matthew. Hi there. How are you doing, sir? What's your story? Where are you today? I am still in Orlando, um, although fortunately the temperature has dropped due to fall. It's now a chilly 75 degrees. Um, and uh, my story, I, you know, I, first of all, thanks for having me back. For anybody that didn't catch the, the last webinar, didn't know about it. Uh, I've been with Constant Contact for seven years. My job is to teach Constant Contact. Been to 46 states in my seven years. I've taught over 13,000 small businesses and nonprofits in person and really excited to be here today. Great. Well, Constant Contact certainly a, a, a well-known brand, and we did have a conversation a, a couple of weeks ago about the Solution Provider Program. Folks, you get the information there. Uh, Matthew, since I'm driving, you just say next slide, please, sir, when you're ready Great. to rock. Well, I, I want to talk to everybody today about a specific component of our partner program, and you can go ahead and toggle the slide there, um, Harry. Yeah, perfect. So uh, before I get into the specific part of our partner program and kind of explain the partner program a little bit deeper, I do want to encourage everybody, if you want a deeper dive into some content, Harry and I did a webinar, oh gosh, a couple of weeks ago that yeah, went weeks into, ago. yeah, yeah, that went into the ROI of email marketing as it stands today. Um, a good core of the webinar was how uh, Constant Contact is iterated into our third version with far more uh, usability, especially around automation, segmentation, personalization, reporting. Um, we also talked to one of our lead developers about our new API and the functionality there. Um, and then I did an introduction to our partner program because, you know, it'd be ideally interesting to the folks on our calls. Uh, you can go ahead and toggle. Okay. But today I want to specifically talk about one segment of our partner program. So if I can kind of start big picture here, Constant Contact has a partner program that can produce revenue should you opt into the program. And there's two flavors to our program. Before we do that, I believe, Jenny, do we have a poll? And you can go ahead and toggle the next slide, Harry. Okay, Jenny, go ahead and put the poll up. So I want to know if any of you are currently managing marketing and specific for clients. Uh, to get an idea of who we're talking to today, I think. Uh, Harry, and you and I were a bit surprised at how uh, many affirmatives we got when we asked this question the yeah. last time, um, but uh, because our assumption was maybe it was a little more on the techno uh, technology side, not on the marketing side. So we're asking the same thing of this group, uh, you know, are you currently managing marketing for clients? Yeah, and, and Matthew, I guess I, you know, now that I've had a little time to reflect on that, I, I guess it's the old... Uh, uh, investigation 101 called follow the money yeah <laughs> and the 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 spend is shifting to marketing that's the what we're seeing is that it used to be in the the air-cooled server room and that's shifting out to marketing but um judy go ahead and close the poll folks have probably had enough time to take a look at that and can you see my deck again, please. I do see the deck. I don't see the results. I don't think Jenny's launched the results yet. Oh, okay. Jenny, maybe if you want to read the results. We'll see if we can get those up, either verbally or what have you. All right, you. maybe we can come back to that. Oh, there we go. Yeah. All right. Well, that's more in line with what I would have expected. Um, we got a little higher in the positive uh, uh, the last time. Um, you know, and I think, Harry, you hit the nail on the head there. As far as uh, using Constant Contact as a marketing solution, it's all about broadening the portfolio, giving people more options, and yeah. we make that extremely easy. So if you want to go ahead and uh, close that, Jenny, and we can go into the next slide. All right. And Matthew, please confirm when you can see my uh, screen again. Forgive me. Sure, I can see you and I. Okay. So let's see. Aha. Okay. So <laughs> Constant Contacts Partner Program comes in two flavors. We have partner referrals and we have partner managed. So let's go ahead and toggle the next slide, Harry, and I'll talk about the referral. So the webinar we did last time was more focused on the referral part of the business. And the referral part of the business is truly very passive. You basically are issued a URL 
uh, you put it on your website, put it in social media, put it in any kind of material that you might want to, and Constant Contact will contact that referral, close that business, um, and service it. Um, but regardless of you go referral or what we're going to talk about in depth, uh, well, in a little bit of depth today, our referral, I mean, our, our managed program, regardless which avenue you go, and many of our partners actually do both, um, you also immediately get money. So if you get a constant contact client aboard, whether that's referred or managed, you get bonuses right away. Um, so you can get money just by getting the business and then, of course, through a repeated uh, a monthly uh, revenue share. Go ahead and switch to the next slide, Harry. Okay. So just a little bit about partner referred. Partner referred uh, is 15%. Again, pretty turnkey. So um, we issue the the URL. You put it out there. Anybody that uh, acts on it, we close, and you can go ahead and move the next one too. Okay. So the beautiful part about partner referred is that we do all the legwork. So as soon as you refer them, whether that's actively where you're telling them to go to the URL or passively they're seeing it on your website, we contact them, we close them, we sell them, we service them. And our service is what we're most well known for. We have fantastic US-based customer service. Um, and that's really key if you're going to use the referral engine or the referral part of your business because it's all about longevity, right? So if, if you're getting that revenue share month after month after month on top of those quarterly rewards, um, that's just increasing the direct deposit into your account. You can go to the next slide, Harry. Yeah, and what I was going to say, if you don't mind, what I was going to say is there's a dashboard for that, what you're doing. Just I, I can visualize because the level of service you're providing is expensive, right? But then I, I would like to see it sliced and diced by customer satisfaction or CSAT scores. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 that is going to be very interesting to me because what, what your company is doing with that level of uh, onshore support and handholding boy howdy man that's uh, that that's a real cost i mean i applaud don't don't get me wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh you know it, we're taking all the workload um and yeah. you know the the savvy marketers or the savvy partners that we have actually use both simultaneously they cherry pick or hand pick clients that they want to work with that they see a need and a good fit and ultimately if you do have a broad portfolio of services um, you might find somebody who, uh, through Synergy, is a better fit to actually manage their marketing than somebody else who you'd think may not be worth the time or aren't quite ready yet or you'd rather have constant contact do the work. Um, an example you're seeing here of the revenue share, so if you sign up 10 people, um, it can equal you know, $100 in revenue share each month, um, and that's not including anything else you bring aboard. You can switch to the next slide, Harry. Okay. So that brings me into the, the the piece that we thought might resonate the most with this audience, which is the managed account. So these are going to be accounts that you are actively helping them produce their marketing or working with them on their analytics, tying it into their website, helping them grow their list. Um, there's a wide variety of ways that you could work with that client. But our assumption is you're working with them, you're retaining them, you're growing them. Um, but the good news is, is that you can get additional money uh, in, in performance awards through that. And you can go to the next slide, Harry. Okay. And you get more than that. I feel like a game show host today here, Harry. Uh, you, uh, you, you get access to our award-winning version three constant contact and you actually get email plus so you get an account for your own business to promote your own business um and on top of that that is our our cadillac version so that comes with all of our automation segmentation and personalization tools um on top of that you get an account manager who's going to help guide your business with this particular part of the business um you know our account managers are really knowledgeable about how this part of the business works so if you're not inherently in email marketing, or maybe you're not, marketing is not your primary focus, we'll guide you through that. We have uh, amazing training and support. You can go to the next slide too, Harry. All righty. And that comes in what you're seeing here, which is our partner portal. And that's going to be a resource for things like training, like education. We keep people up to date with the latest uh, iterations of the software and trends in the market. Um, on top of that, we have uh, marketing assets and, and material for a partner to uh, tie themselves into our, our brand. Constant Contact is the number one email marketing company in the country. You can go to, go to the next slide, Harry. All righty. 
And this is an example of where we start to do a deep dive. So you can actually manage the accounts through what we call the console in, in the partner uh, uh, platform. And I can do things like actually get into each client's account. I can actually uh, uh, take a look at their results. I can also uh, manage how their um, their payments are being processed and you know keep an eye on that client directly from my dashboard, um, making it a lot yeah. easier than some software companies where you'll have to go around with a lot of different usernames and passwords. You can go to the next slide, Harry. All righty. And most importantly, you're doing this for money. And so we give you clarity and transparency into how the money's coming in, um, setting up your direct deposit so that it goes directly into your account and giving you visibility into this part of the business. Um, so if you're you know, both doing referred business and you're also taking on clients from a managerial side, you have access to all the information you need to succeed and all the training and support to make the most out of this partnership. You can go to the next one, Harry. All righty. Um, as I said, we support you with a wide variety of different uh, um, uh, avenues from both uh, an account manager to a dedicated marketing team at Constant Contact to help you get the most out of your experience with Constant Contact. And I know I'm getting a little long, Harry, so you can go ahead and go to the, I believe the next slide's uh, the final one, um, to apply. To apply, that's how you do it. Bitly slash CTCT apply. Um, you know, we'll certainly uh, I'd love to talk to you. Um, uh, yeah. We have somebody ready to, you know, talk you through the, the deeper dive than I can do here in five minutes. But um, I'm so excited to share this stuff with you because I think it's going to be a real value and another arrow in your quiver as you broaden your portfolio. Well, exactly. And uh, Matthew, number one, by, by the way, you're always number one in my heart. No offense to Matt, number two on the line. But um, the uh, uh, it's, it's a darn good time, folks. We're coming into that retreat season, right? The time where we're strategic between Thanksgiving and New Year's. And it's a darn good time to think about the arrows in the quiver to round out your portfolio, to have a little bit of economic diversification, um, so you're not tied to just one business model. And and then again, I would also say dovetailing of the trend of the marketing spin. So Matthew, number one, thank you, sir. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> thank on. you, Harry. Thanks, everybody. All righty. So folks, we're going to kind of bring this in for a landing. Um, we are launching Power BI Nation in early 2019, as you know, Part of our brand is the term nation, Azure nation, Microsoft 365 nation, all under the corporate entity SMB nation. So we're going to go ahead and launch a community early next year to try and capture some of the enthusiasm. Now, I want to tell you, this is going to be a slightly different community. Um, historically, we are the SMB MSP, the SMB partner, the SMB computer guy and gal. And they, you are certainly welcome to participate. However, um, IT pros are equally excited about dashboarding and Power BI and, and, and this paradigm, as well as larger partners. And I'll tell you where I saw that firsthand was with Tableau, right? I mean, I know some people over at Tableau. I've had, I've gone over there and had chats with them and uh, even tested them and didn't use them, but um, larger partners, what they would call global uh, system integrators, GSIs, that's okay. That's okay. That gets you thinking about growth. Um, Want to see if you have any questions. Jenny, if you could both monitor the questions and then can you bring up the uh, the poll so I can get um, a, a showing uh, hand raisers of people who would like a dedicated session on uh, the hands-on lab I showed you folks. Take about an hour of your time. We'll do it interactively. So maybe we'll all be on screen, depending on the number of people. But I will expect you to log on and go to that hands-on lab and actually complete the keystrokes. I'm an active learner. Works for me. Jenny, while Harry, the poll's there. Yeah, Jenny? Harry, we do have a question for Matt. Um, we have a client who says, we have a few clients who we signed up on Constant Contact a while ago. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to get them on our referral list to get the commission? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, if they're currently, especially if they're currently managing them, um, just uh, go to that apply. Um, uh, we can also get a, a, some more information out to y'all um, specifically if you can connect us, Harry. Uh, but yeah, you can start making money on that those accounts you're managing now. 
Um, it obviously wouldn't be retroactive, but certainly moving forward, um, start earning that extra that extra money for what you're doing and get access to all the other things. Perfect. And it's, it's up on the screen, uh, bit.ly slash CTCT applied. Uh, Jenny, we'll get that out in the thank you letter. And leave um, it up for just a second longer, Harry, because I'm going to close down the polls. But before I do that, Chris, I got a message that you wanted yes on the hands-on lab. Can you also just hit yes on the poll question so it's double there and we don't miss you um, for any reason? So let me leave it open just a second longer. We'll close that and then leave that up on your screen for just a second longer, Harry, so we can see it. Yep. And, and folks, the hands-on lab that I'm going to do with you will be a non-commercial endeavor. Um, it, much more intimacy, happy to do it. As I prepared for today's lecture, you saw I kicked over to video because again, I thought about cooking shows in the morning on the major networks, and I'm not sure you really want to stay two hours while the 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 the, the turkey's um, on a rotisserie. <laughs> At least not today. Okay, Jenny. Last call for questions, folks. We're uh, coming up on 115 Pacific. Uh, while you're formulating any final questions, again, Office 365 Saturday at Microsoft Redmond. This week, Google Office 365 Saturday Redmond. You'll find the link. It's an e event, eBright. Uh, sign up, it's free. That means free launch, great prizes. Next week, Ingram One in Washington, DC, followed by the Cisco Partner Conference. Shortly thereafter, uh, and then off to NextGen Cloud in early December. Oh, and Jenny, Jenny on election day, November 6th, our good friends, Channel Pro. Channel Pro down in California in Long Beach. All right, Jenny, what say you? Are we good? Are we good to wrap it up and let people get back to work? We are. We don't currently have any questions at this time. All right, thank you panelists. Thank you, Constant Contact. SolarWinds and SureWeb will be launching the Small Business Saturday contest end of day today for SureWeb. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.